Hello and welcome to another episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, a weekly podcast coming to you from the QI offices in Covent Garden. My name is Dan Schreiber. I am sitting here with Andrew Hunter-Murray, Anna Tashinsky, and James Harkin. And once again, we have gathered around the microphones, but this time for a very special, somewhat sad episode. Uh, poignant. Yeah, poignant episode. Um, a very a very sad announcement that we have to make is that... A Anna- happy announcement, No. <laughs> Is that, I think God, it's a happy announcement. Is it? Has, it's very confusing. Well, isn't it? Anna Tashinsky is leaving the show, so it's a. Um, I'm delighted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Ooh, I'm delighted. Yeah, for for nine months temporarily. Or so. yeah, temporarily. Let's, let's say yeah, 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 yeah. She's going away for a while uh, to think about what she's done, and then <laughs> then she can come back. And what specifically she's done? Yes, is, is created a baby. She has. She's yeah. been collaborating on another project uh, with another mm. person. Um, and, very low effort. So much less work on the podcast and i hope that it continues <laughs> that way that it does anyway yeah. we thought we would commemorate this uh tragedy uh i think it's a tragedy that she's going oh, that she's going joyful news no, joyful. Joyful. That, that's obviously happy stuff yeah but not for us not for the listener not for dan not for me i honestly feel like i am secretly dying and no one's told me this <laughs> is big leaving drinks tonight people keep saying coming to say, anna's leaving yeah. thing as someone who's been in this situation or a similar situation 12 months ago metaphorically it's the end i'm gonna be dead inside from now on aren't i i'm afraid so yeah you were yeah. gone for two weeks though on paternity <laughs> should we have done a missing <laughs> james is off <laughs> <laughs> do the best of and that, but we should say that's what we're here to do we're here to commemorate our wonderful buddy again uh, <laughs> a, a very deppy word so can we say celebrate you know it's this not a sad it's occasion it's not a eulogy well it's... yeah so we thought what we'd do is we would present our three favorite facts this time not four it's sort of get used to the idea that she's not here and uh share with you some of the greatest moments that she's had over the last nine years of fish oh nine years God, we've been doing been nine this years. it's coming up to it in march of this year Jesus. so yeah we're on the brink so thank in- god i'm going out um <laughs> you're sorry. coming back you're coming back in nine months and there's a very exciting roster of guests actually presenting lined up to replace you so you know wow let's not use the word replace <laughs> <laughs> would you jump into a grave that quickly <laughs> sarah pasco <laughs> oh. jump into someone's grave is that what you do <laughs> Wait. I don't think if you're replacing them, you climb into their coffin with them. <laughs> you're right. What's the phrase? Dance oh, on their grave. Yeah, maybe. Or, no, yeah. Jump into what their bed. Called? No. Jump shoes. into their bed. Pick up their shoes. <laughs> Pick up their shoes. Fill the dead man's shoes. I wouldn't piss on their shoes if they were dead. That's the phrase. Is it? No. no it's <laughs> like. I think it's maternity cover. I think that's the word <laughs> we're looking for. They haven't even cleaned up the funeral meats she's, she's yet. She's not even that cold. Can't... She's not even cold. I'm sorry, they haven't cleaned up the her funeral, funeral meat. meats. I think that's. I think that's actually. <laughs> I think that's from Hamlet. Oh no, they. Yeah, no, it is. There's a thing about in, funeral meats. In yeah. the wedding, they reuse the stuff for Hamlet's dad's funeral uh-huh. for the wedding to. Um, Hamlet's Have you heard dad's of cheesy brother. funeral potatoes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yummy, though. It's a thing they do in Utah, I think. Okay. And it's um, it's basically potatoes, cream, cheese, and cornflakes all together wow. right. and it's what you have in funerals oh. and the idea is yeah. that it's the kind of thing that a typical utah family a typical mormon family would have in the larder and everyone would have these four or five different things i think chicken soup is one of them as well but you put them all together and it's like the meal that you have at a funeral so really hold yeah. on you don't mix the chicken soup with the yeah I'll get potato. A... you just put it in the chicken soup wow. yeah yeah yeah. so then you put cornflakes on top we're wow. here basically to have your cheesy funeral potato meats <laughs> <Nice>. and, uh, <laughs> lovely um, i think chicken soup's quite an insensitive thing to have because that traditionally makes you better but of course at a funeral <laughs> it's too late for that isn't it <laughs> absolutely right what oh. sorry this uh, we've broken the format we're gonna do our three favorite facts about anna tashinsky each one of us presenting it and why don't we start with you james Okay, Uh, well, my fact this week is that in order to get into the United States, Anna Tashinsky had to tell a fact about a dead president. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm never allowed there again. (laughs) They let you in, surprisingly, despite it. They did. It was, Um, or or border control or whatever it is. Yeah, I actually can't remember the context where they made me say it. Well, we'd landed, hadn't we? We'd landed. So originally, we had to get a visa as... (laughs) 
something like talent. Pe- people of exceptional talent right. or something like that. Yeah, it was like we were Julia Roberts or something. Yeah. She wouldn't need one, of course, because she is American. But. <laughs> yeah. So we went to the American embassy and we had to prove to them that we had exceptional talent or they were mm. exceptionally famous or something. Yeah. Uh, and the woman at the at the window just said, no such thing as a fish. I never heard of you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And immediately we were on the back foot. Uh, but anyway, eventually we managed to convince them that we should go to America and get a visa to work there so that we could do our show. But when we got to the passport control, the visa said that we were a comedy podcast. Mm-hmm. And the guy said to you, Anna, as you walked up, he said, well, what do you do? And you said, well, it's a kind of about facts. And he said, well, tell me a fact then. And the only thing you could think about was something about the murder of a president. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only thing I can usually think about is President Garfield's anus, but all the more so when you're landing in the home of President Garfield. Yeah. So yeah, I told him that um, when President Garfield was assassinated, um, it was a slow process and he spent the last month of his life eating through his anus, which yeah. I'm sure you're all familiar with if you remember episode one. Yeah, well, second did, ever how, fact on the show. How, yeah. did he, uh, how did he react? The border President control Garfield, guy. yeah. He <laughs> was, oh, <wait. laughs> there were a lot of funeral potatoes yeah. that week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think he did what most border control people do, which is be very unimpressed and slightly threatening. I think it was like, okay, go on ahead then, ma'am. Wow. Wow. <laughs> which is the reaction I've always wanted to all of our podcast facts. Yeah. So. Do you know, weirdly, this, this fact about President Garfield was, I remember the exact moment that you told me that fact. I can remember the exact spot of the office. Yeah, because we were trying, we were getting ready to do what was still a run through of the show. And we used that segment in the very first episode. Yeah. But um, I remember you had sent around your facts and your fact was about President Garfield. And it was to do with the fact that he spent three months on his deathbed and they tried to cure him. I can't remember your wording, but it wasn't great. It was sort of like, we need we need that. <laughs> Just a quick note, Anna. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's so, what this is going to be. This that, is an intervention. What to okay. think about over the next nine yeah. months. Dan's been holding back. that in for nine years. Yeah. <laughs> I've got You're a big do list. This for everyone from episode well, yeah, yeah. One. We're starting. Let's let's start episode one. Uh, okay, so we'll be here landing. a while. Tell me what I should. Have I said. can't remember what you said to me at the time, but I said to you, "I love the story." Is there any other way of expressing it? And you literally, in a beat, said, "You went, oh, what about this? For the last three months of his life, he ate everything through his anus." And I remember genuinely, it was a bit of a thunderbolt, kind of like, "Oh my god, we're gonna have a hit on our hands." It was just so beautifully wow. crafted. Yeah, I really felt it. I'm just telling the origin story here. What it a was... strange inspirational moment. I don't think a lot of great inventors <laughs> could <laughs> empathise with that yeah. moment being the one but that's, Thunderbolt. and that's why we were so nearly called the president garfield anus cast well it's such a shame <laughs> that we changed the name <laughs> to be honest when we were thinking of our first book james and i when we were brainstorming ideas yeah. for the title the president's anus was, i remember the president's yeah. anus coming yeah, up yeah. quite a bit being tossed about it feels like the, <laughs> <laughs> as it was it feels like the beginning of a title the president's anus it feels like it should be the president's anus is missing or some <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah you know, but one of my favorite things of that tour so we did a big Amer- it was our first ever american tour mm. our first um and only american tour. Yeah. pulled yourself back from saying a big american tour because it was five dates <laughs> <laughs> well, well, for us it was super exciting. We, we were up exciting. on um, oh, Times Square. We were up on Times Square. Yeah. We got to play New York. We played Washington. We stayed in the um, the Watergate. the Watergate Hotel, yeah. where they had like remember they had the um, the pencils like please steal this pencil and oh, stuff the room like keys. that. And the room keys it said I was stolen from yeah. the Watergate. That's Hotel right. Yeah. yeah. And my, all the um, light bulbs I, and pillows I brought home. My suitcase <laughs> yeah. said the same yeah. thing weirdly. <laughs> and those documents from the White House. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but my favorite thing of all was when we were staying in New York and I just remember seeing Anna one morning and her <laughs> looking unbelievably bemused because she was holding a bill in her hand for a, a basic bit of laundry that she oh, had sent to the hotel my god and which came to $240 it was more than that was it was it? more than that I think yeah. it was like $400 it was. oh my god and I thought it was complimentary I just I don't know. They just put a bag outside your door, didn't they, with laundry written on it? You just yeah. shove it in. You just put stuff yeah. in. I yes. don't know. We always send Premier Inns when we're in the UK. Yeah. We're not used to this. So yeah, I tossed all my clothes from the whole tour in. <laughs> and then... You had enough clothes. Uh, it wasn't, you didn't really need it all done. I absolutely but, not. We were going home the next day. But sometimes <laughs> it's lovely to get home with a fresh case of clothes. It's, it feels incredible. You just anyway. So we made a loss on that tar, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. I should say just to make you think kindly of these people you're stuck with for the next nine months that they agreed that that could be split that loss over the whole. 
tour group rather than just me taking did we? the hit. Yeah, yeah. And I think I th- yeah, sorry about I think that. the tour pretty much dead on broke even. Yeah, right. But it was <laughs> but we would have been in the black if it had uh, been I owe through. you all hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think no, I think I didn't pipe up because when I went back to England I had bought so many books that my overweight oh, yeah. money oh, allowance yeah. was something like a thousand dollars or something. It was what? ridiculous. It we was, didn't take the hit for that though, did we? I, I mean, think you might have. I think we might have done, yeah. Oh, if I'm gonna take the laundry hit, I was I oh, thought gosh. Andy, we should have gone for the hookers and <laughs> yeah, cocaine what? like we said. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I, I only ate one meal a day in America because I was so concerned about making a loss. <laughs> we made him walk all the way from Boston to New York. I took one pair of pants and I wore it inside, outside, back to front, upside down. No, I know I was on tour with, you know, Elton John. And, uh, oh. Yeah, so sorry about that. Wow. But yeah, didn't get evicted from the country. No, no what's it called when you get evicted? Deported. Deported. <laughs> didn't get deported for talking about presidential assassination. So actually helped us get in. So if you are trying to get into America, give it a go. Yeah. Okay, well, right. the point of this show, I think, is that we're going to play some of Anna's best bits. Uh, and so it's a very short show. It should be a very short <laughs> show. So let's do a little bit now, beginning with President Garfield's anus. <laughs> Stop the podcast! Stop the podcast! Hey everyone, this week's episode of Fish is sponsored by Gusto. Yes, Gusto gives you everything you need to create fabulous home cooked meals with Gusto. <laughs> That's right. And there are over 250. 50 recipes every month to pick from this means if like me you have a family with three young children who are the fussiest eaters in the world you can sit down with them and read the menus like their bedtime stories at night and decide what will actually go into their bodies and they will eat it and they will eat it with gusto uh what will actually go into your body a shame that gusto didn't call their business that but it really is great guys the ingredients are pre-proportioned that means zero food waste the ingredients are fresh high quality and if you would like to try it yourself you can get 60 percent off your first box and 25 percent off all boxes for the next two months that's right. So all you need to do is head to gusto, that's G O U S T O dot co dot UK. And if you use the offer code FISH, you're going to get 60% off your first box, but then 25% off all remaining boxes for the next two months. It's a fabulous offer. So as Dan says, all you need to do is go to gusto, G O U S T O dot co dot UK, and whap in the offer code FISH. Okay. On with the show. On with the podcast. Okay, fact number two. Uh, Anna, this one's yours. Yeah, um, so for the last month of his life, US President James Garfield ate everything through his anus. (laughs) (laughs) Big claim, Anna. (laughs) (laughs) We will get letters from a lot of people here. Um, Yeah. I mean, I wasn't there, but this is what the doctors tell me. Uh, (laughs) um, No, so James Garfield was, as everyone obviously knows, shot in July 1881, and he lived for a further 80 days. Um, he was shot in the small, in the like small of his back, and once in the arm. So doctors now say he would have been out of hospital about two or three days later. But obviously, because um, medicine was not as quite as advanced as it is now, in 1881 they just invited like dozens of doctors to his bedside, who all prodded around trying to find this bullet. They didn't know where the bullet had gone in his body. Um, so they gathered round, prodded about, made him worse and worse. He stopped being able to eat. And obviously, if you stop being able to consume food in those days, they just shoved it up your ass. And so that's what they okay, did. So does that work? Um, it does not work, oh. no. Uh, it was widely discredited in the early 30s. I think you get about an eighth of nu- the nutrition from some of the food. Oh, but so there's some food that you can't absorb at all. Uh, what yeah. I love is the list of foods that he was fed in this moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beef bouillon, um, <laughs> egg yolks... <laughs> Milk. Egg yolks. Egg yolks. Wait, <laughs> milk. sorry. Come on, guys. Um, egg yolks was only true for a while, so I was reading the uh, the doctor at the time, his report on it. So, yeah, he was fed egg yolks for a bit of time, and then all the surgeons complained that it was causing annoying and offensive flatus. Um, mm. And so they ceased feeding him <laughs> egg yolks. That did the trick, So apparently. they stopped it because it was annoying them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the other way around. <laughs> Guys, I'd be quite happy to eat that egg. Uh, 
with my mouth. <laughs> that's that's all right by you guys. Apparently, it's illegal to move sheep in Wales until they've been checked to see whether they carry traces of the fallout from Chernobyl. Isn't really? It? Yeah. On this particular subject, I've got a question for you guys. Oh yeah. Why shouldn't you buy trousers from the northern Ukraine? I don't know. Why um, shouldn't you buy trousers from the northern Ukraine? Chernobyl fallout. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the joke. Yeah, just so you know, just as a little inside bit of behind the scenes information here, Anna has consistently for the last, what, 14 podcasts said that same joke and we've cut it out every single episode. has refused to have it in the podcast. This is a day. And you will not hear it in this one either unless someone else said it. It's the best joke ever. Ambrose Paré, who was a famous doctor in the 15th century, saw a beggar in Paris who was uh, begging him for money and who did so by I don't actually know if we can put this out it's so gross Let's say it anyway. who did so by uh, she begged by lifting her skirts to reveal a prolapsed rectum it was a horrid sight he says it was over half a foot long leaking pus like fluid over her legs and garments but his companion then attacked the woman and said you're a big faker you don't look sick enough to have a prolapsed you, rectum you have to be pretty confident that you're right in that situation yeah. don't you? <laughs> I know prolapsed rectums <laughs> and that madame <laughs> well, he beat this woman to the ground and eventually she was forced to reveal that it was actually the prolapsed rectum of an ox that she put inside oh, her right. own So it bottom. was actually a prolapsed rectum. It yeah. was, and it was a prolapsed Well, I bet he felt pretty silly then, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a human prolapsed rectum. <laughs> It was the prolapse rectum of an ox. Yeah, that she'd put up her own bum, though. I think if you'd <laughs> oh <my laughs> gone to the trouble of doing that, I really think you've earned your 50 cents or whatever. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but the lifting of her skirts as well. <laughs> she could just have a sign saying, prolapse rectum, please help. <laughs> Wait, so if you saw someone with a sign that said... <laughs> <laughs> That's probably how she started. And she's like, no one is buying this at all. <laughs> Except Andy. Uh, I can show it to you, no need. <laughs> Absolutely believe you. <laughs> the thing is, though, I would pay... I would pay 50p not to see a pronounced director. That is a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> she should have done that. <laughs> We should move on. When they were building the New York subway, the guys who were building it were called sand hogs because they dug through lots of sand. And I was reading a newspaper report from 1916, and it was about this guy called Marshall Maybe who was working in the tunnel to like d- dig the subway, and there was a pocket of compressed air which suddenly kind of escaped. So he's like got this big shield up in the tunnel in front of him, and they're using this shield to like push forward and make the tunnel bigger. And he said he saw an 18-inch pocket of air suddenly appear, and it sucked him towards it. Whoa. He was sucked into it. He was blasted up through the ground, so he was blasted <laughs> up through 12 feet of riverbed and Whoa. then blasted up through the river itself and then hurled up 25 feet in the air above the river. <laughs> he wasn't grinding through earth, 12 feet of earth, was yeah, it? Yeah, that's what a riverbed's made of. Yeah. <laughs> it's, less pl- it's more plausible for him to be blasted through 12 feet of earth than 12 feet of concrete or steel or whatever. <laughs> no, I, no, no, I was thinking, was it just a, a tunnel? Like it was a hole that he was blasted through. It just happened I to be going through. I don't believe it, Anna. <laughs> so here we go, let me... There's a whole interview with him <laughs> and everything. Bullshit. There's a nice interview with his wife saying, it's OK, he's fine, he's looking forward to going back to work. <laughs> this is what the uh, New York Times said at the time uh, there's a pocket of compressed air to prevent the river's bottom from caving in um, so they have some I don't know how that works <laughs> but somehow it happened guys and this compressed air got loose and he saw an 18 inch hole and before we knew it he was being sucked towards it two of his colleagues actually also got sucked in and they did perish and wow. he uh, he survived by blasting up, putting his arm out in front of him and blasting up through the river. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> believe the it. <laughs> 12 feet of riverbed. <laughs> and then got shot through and then out in the air? Then there's enough force left over, shot through the, the river itself, and then you had 25 feet in the air. 25 feet? <laughs> 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 the New York Times is a very record. What, y- what, year, what year is it? Yeah, and what date was this? <laughs> <laughs> February 1916, oh, all right, not April. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a little bit insane. Um, but there you go, there's a picture of the guy. 
Oh. Pictures don't lie. What, mid-flight? Or... Not mid-flight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's extraordinary. Did you say that was in New York? Yeah. Um, it was soft ground, so that's why they were called the oh, sandbox. Oh, well, if it was soft ground, I see, yeah. It was still a riverbed, though, 25 it? feet after 12 beds of... <laughs> and a river. And a river. I don't know how it possibly <laughs> happened. <laughs> so there was a woman in uh, South Korea recently who was eating squid. So we all eat squid. We call it calamari for reasons I don't understand. Um, but she was eating some boiled squid in a restaurant and uh, she suddenly felt a pain in her tongue. And it turned out the squid wasn't quite dead and it was a male squid and it had deposited its sperm packet into her tongue. Wow. So she felt horrible pain in her tongue and then felt lots of stuff crawling around inside her tongue oh! and had to go to hospital and they took out um, a whole bunch of sperm and apparently this does happen a bit like there's been reports Shut in japan of it happening up. that's so fucked up <laughs> yeah. i will never fucking eat that shit again oh my god yeah. fuck it out. oh fuck that. That. <laughs> vegetarianism here you come i don't think we've mentioned this before this year kfc have released a novel for the first time okay. what it's <laughs> It's a novel starring the Colonel, and it's a Mills and Boone style romance, and it's called Tender Wings of Desire. <laughs> he I is a sexy man. It's <laughs> well, we ascertained before we started <laughs> recording this podcast that you quite fancy Richard Nixon. Oh yeah. So your how did we miss that when we got to that? We didn't ascertain that. That's warping of the truth. Oh, I'm sorry. I f find him not unattractive, <laughs> given that. There was an well, for Andy, that's pretty much someone saying you're attractive. <laughs> that's the best I can hope for these days. <laughs> I'm not physically repulsed by him. Great, Dave. <laughs> um, he said in an interview that um, something like, I know how I look. I'm under no illusions about my appearance, so I'll have to be good in other ways. And I read that interview and I thought, well, he you don't He is good look. in other ways, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Lots of ways that Richard Nixon is a very good man. <laughs> exactly. what, what would you he say? Really your, yeah, what are your top five ways in which he's a great guy, Hannah? <laughs> when British author William Hazlitt died, his landlady was so keen to relet his room that she hid his body under the bed while she showed new tenants around. <laughs> <laughs> So, and he's still there under that bed, isn't he? He's still there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was, he was a big deal, and people used to go just to the Hazlitt Hotel just because that's where he lived. Seamus Heaney used to go there, obsessed with him, and they would, they would have meetups there just to be able to be in the sort of presence of the location of this yeah. great person who everyone seems to have forgotten, except it turns out... You, Anna no, I mean, he's a fake. People, people know William Hazlitt is, but yeah. I did happen to take a book of his essays on my gap year, which I know is. I just told these guys Party! backstage. So I know <laughs> one of those guys was going to mention it, so um, I thought I'd get in there. Which drug were you taking when you were reading it? <laughs> <laughs> the essays themselves were my drug, James. <laughs> What am I on? I'm on chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't come in chapters, but whatever. Um... You know, in shopping centres where the fish eat your dead oh, yeah. skin. Yeah. I've had that once, and all I could think while I was having it was reincarnation and just looking at the going, what the fuck did you do in your last life yeah. that you have come back to eat my feet? <laughs> this is... I had it once, and I think I've told you guys this, but I had it once in Cambodia, and they had to ask me to take my feet out of the pond because <laughs> you put your feet in with, like, five other people, and my feet are so disgusting that they were all coming to my feet. <laughs> and <laughs> no one else was getting their money's worth. <laughs> I actually... <laughs> It's a real, real actually low point, <laughs> pride-wise, me. <laughs> Okay, it's time for fact number two about Anna Tashinsky, and that is Andy. Well, my fact is a crowdsourced fact. Yeah. Uh, so, as you know, there's a there's a Discord. And if you don't know Discord, it's a website where you chat about stuff. Is that what it is? <laughs> Why did you bother explaining if you have no <laughs> idea? It's a forum. It's a, it's forum, a forum to chat. Website. And, 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 and there is a fish Discord, the fish cord. And uh, as part of Anna's commemoration episode mm, um, morning morning episode i think yeah uh, morning sickness hey. uh, uh dan i think you, 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 
<laughs> Dan, you asked uh, for some for some of Vanna's best bits. Yeah, and 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 asked what what the listeners, you know, fish fans want, wanted wanted to hear again. Um, I mean, various bits. A compilation of Anna saying her own surname um, correctly. When do you say your own surname? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can make a compilation out of that. You can certainly <laughs> make a compilation it. of the evolution of my pronunciation of your surname. Yeah, yeah. Pretty- yeah. A lot of people got quite sad when you evolved from pronouncing it, well, r- as some people said wrongly, Trzinski to was, Tushinsky. Well, yeah, and I always say that it was a bit of a, it was a bit unfair on me because you were right here to tell me I was saying it wrong for about six years and no one did. No one did. Your dad didn't. Your mum didn't. Anytime any of your family came to our show, no one would say, by the way, do you think you might be able to pronounce <laughs> the surname correctly? No one said anything. And yours was a surname that I specifically, if I would say, uh, like, next fact is James, next fact is Andy, I would say, next fact, Chazinski. I would always say your surname. So yeah. it was always coming up. But um, I think, um, do you remember them? O'Leary really liked it. Because yeah. then he had the Schreiber and Chazinski cops, maybe, who were mm. trying to find the president's anus. New York yeah. cops. Yeah. 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 We got to get to the bottom of this big laundry bill, Chazinski. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. What's your pronunciation? Uh, I say Tushinsky, but you can also say Tushinsky. Or I, a lot of people do say Trzinski, and it's weird that people assume that's the way you could say it. It's quite different starting with it's a ch. PT, yeah. You don't call it a cherodactyl, do you? You don't. I don't know. Or a charmigan. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> but I should say for actual Polish listeners that it's Tarzinski, so you're supposed to say the p. So I don't pronounce it right either. Okay. There we go. And I sort of should also be Tarzinska because I'm a girl. Oh, oh yeah. no way! Wow. Yeah. So we'll... oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I don't remember this suggestion for a, a clip to play. Uh, episode 342 No such thing as a presidential fight club Anna refers to a child as a wimp Because he had asthma And that child ladies and gentlemen Grew up to be podcaster Andrew Hunter <laughs> <laughs> um, There's probably some context That I, don't, I haven't seen the reports of that myself And um, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation But I'm going to refer it to a committee Who will, <laughs> in, will investigate yeah. And you'll end up being suspended for nine months It's perfect, it's the perfect crime yeah. It's so funny what people remember Like one person uh, wrote I can't remember which episode So this is them like they've literally banked this in their head yeah. I can't remember which episode but Anna calling Mutunus Tutunus Muti Tuti <laughs> <laughs> lives rent free in my brain <laughs> Muti Tuti I don't I know who that, that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember this bit at all and neither does the person who said it I don't remember the episode but it was about some female animal drinking semen and Anna was like yeah relatable sometimes the tap is just too far away <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't recall that. It's actually just, just a few times at uni and had terrible hangovers. <laughs> There's a cup by the bed. What are you going to do? <laughs> Fill me up, love, before you go. Oh, oh my God. But then do go. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah, you, I mean, you've had, a lot of, uh, you've had a lot of feedback about your kind of quite dirty-ish... Uh, Potty mouth, I would say. I feel like I'm the least potty. I, I think know. people just notice it more when you do it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it. It's everyday sexism. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of, actually, there's a bit of a debate, even on the Discord, about uh, you, Anna. So wh- one person says, if you go back and listen to the first year's episodes, Anna's so restrained and polite in comparison, and then she gets comfortable and the sarcasm starts to flow. Okay. Mm. Now, someone has replied to that saying, I'm on episode 39. She has never been polite. (laughs) (laughs) I think there is one episode, I remember editing it, where you're polite for about two thirds of the episode. And then for the final third of the episode, you just go completely off the rails. Really? And it was the episode when you drank a pint of champagne before the show. Oh, wow. That was an early one, one of our first live shows. I think it might have been our actual first live show or maybe our second. It was a a Christmas one and it was at Aces and Aces. Aces and Aces. In North London. That's right. And you can really, you can pinpoint the exact (laughs) second that the champagne hits. But what's confusing is that I'm sure Dan and I drank pints of champagne yeah. for that. And I, I'm yeah. sh- I also am sure that Dan is more of a lightweight than I am. Mm. Yeah, so- but the difference is that Dan is never coherent. Mm. <laughs> you can't tell. Yes, That's the beauty exactly. Of this I'm bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk now. No one's noticed. <laughs> Episode 261. Oh, yeah. Dan's talking about Scott of the Antarctic taking two gramophones with him. Anna, he was a fucking idiot, wasn't he? <laughs> 
<laughs> You've got to stand by that. It's not surprising you died. <laughs> you know, didn't take two gramophones. Amundsen. Amundsen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Who actually, I don't. I hate saying that name so much. You I can never say weird. it. I know. Amundsen. Amundsen. Amund- yeah. You, yeah. Amundsen. Went, Amundsen. <laughs> Amundsen. <laughs> wow. I don't know why I see it coming up in my head. Is this how you feel, Dan, with all words? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I see. I see them coming up on the page, and you've got to make a decision. You're either gonna try and pronounce it correctly, get it wrong, mm-hmm. or and mm-hmm. chicken out and get it wrong just for that or you just got to run through it yeah. you just got to you got to it reminds bolt. me and i know this is a podcast about anna yeah um but it does remind me of the first audiobook that we did <laughs> uh which was just after you'd had your first baby and yeah. were very short oh, on sleep yeah. uh and dan kept pronouncing the word january february <laughs> Like six times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, Dan, oh. Dan, you said February. Can you just do it oh, again? Sorry. But yeah, say, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, here we go. February. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. It was remarkable. It was, it was yeah. really it was something. Amazing. And we yeah. had to change the whole article in the end, didn't we, to something that happened in February? I used to love those books because they were the books of the year. Uh, and it was like things that had happened between January and December that year. Obviously, the book came out in November, so it's usually January to September, September or yeah. October. Um, but Andy used to always come in with things that had happened the previous year. Yeah. Yep. And Anna would be like, no, this was last year. And Andy's like, yeah, but it was late 20... 20- Come on, it was December. My, my reasoning here <laughs> is that you're doing one of these books a year. Yeah. Each book has to have a 12-month catchment area. Yeah. It's the book of not the calendar year, not the calendar year, but no. the like the school year or the, the school year, <laughs> yeah. the, the financial year. I mean, that's right, the school year. <laughs> you yeah. start in September. Everyone understands. Otherwise, you're knocking out a third of your own material. Yeah. Why didn't we yeah. name it the book of the school year? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's not honest. The book of the financial year would have really <laughs> set those sales <laughs> rocketing. Else. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Have we got one last one, Andy? Or um, Anna is among the ten percent of people who can lick their own nose. What? Oh. We did a. We did a. Oh, okay. oh my you god! Yeah, yeah, she's go. doing it. Oh, right, yeah. She's doing it. We did a fact about Buddha and how Buddha could stick his tongue through mm. his, <laughs> into his ear. That yeah. was it. Yeah, and then <laughs> um, and then you showed us that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. and had lots of other stuff that I don't have though. Weird body part anomalies. Yeah. I also actually have a lot, but they're less sort of <laughs> magical than Buddha's, <laughs> and more like get medical help. <laughs> That's good though. Touching your nose. I can't do that. Your tongue barely gets out of your mouth. I think I'm tongue tied. Oh, really? really? That, and that's why you're so bad at breastfeeding, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I'm still trying. Yeah. Um, good on you. Practice will get you there. <laughs> oh. Your poor mother. That's a bristly, bristly experience, Dan. You're very bearded. <laughs> yeah. That's a rough. Yeah, it's not, it's not good for the. There's a breast yeah. rash happening there. Really sanded boobs. <laughs> <up here. laughs> <laughs> the nipple's almost gone all together. Just, just a flat. <laughs> Bloody hell. Potato. <laughs> Flat potato. Um, Can okay. we have some more, more of Anna, please? More classic, <laughs> classic Jasinski. Okay, well, let's. Um, I'll have a look on the archives. Let's see if we can find some of the things that you've mentioned in the next little Anna compilation. Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to let you know we are sponsored this week by LinkedIn Jobs. That's right. LinkedIn Jobs. This is the place where if you are a business and you've got a space going and you need to find the right person for the job, you can head here to hone it down and find the perfect person without wasting thousands of hours, basically having a second job looking for someone to join your company. You don't need a second job. You need a new hire. And that's exactly what LinkedIn Jobs could provide you. There are all these good tools to get the right person for your business. There are screening questions that mean you can effortlessly sort the wheat from the chaff. So much chaff out there these days. And you know, mm. no one's interested in chaff. Actually, I'm sure there are some commercial uses for chaff. But you want to be hiring the wheat. And so make sure to use LinkedIn Jobs to get that delicious wheat into your business. Just think, if we had used LinkedIn jobs on no such thing as a fish, I wouldn't be here. We'd have someone competent. So if you want to have a bash at this and you want to see if you can find the right person using this super easy way, just head to linkedin.com slash fish. And if you use that, you're going to get a free job posting with that offer code. So do that, try it out and see if you can find someone. Exactly. Just go to linkedin.com slash fish and you can post a job for free terms and conditions you'll be relieved to hear apply (laughs) okay on with the show on with the podcast
My fact is that the way to recognise the Buddha uh, is to look out for his webbed feet, a tongue that can reach his ears, and withdrawn genitalia. <laughs> That's a good excuse on a date. No, 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 it's not small. I'm just, I'm the Buddha. I'm the reincarnated Buddha. <laughs> oh, yeah, then show me your tongue, because I could get on board with this. <laughs> <laughs> I read that um, female beetles, um, they quench their thirst through sex, um, and it's because of the semen and the, and the fluids in the semen, because they get very dehydrated, and so when they have sex, it's actually just like having a drink for them. That's the reason we all do it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the tap is too far away. <laughs> A few people who were farmers who were involved in castrating lambs when they were born um, got very ill very quickly, and there was 12 people who got ill. But they worked out that two of them got ill because they were castrating with an old method that still goes on these days. Not, not completely, but in the 1800s all the time. Uh, they castrate using their teeth. So these are, yeah, these are humans who go, and two of these guys um, were castrating these, these lambs with their teeth, and they got very ill. Um, they... I'm my, I mean, one of my best friends has done that in Australia. Really? In Western Australia. Yep. Did they get ill? He used to, he's, well, he's pretty insane, but he's not sick. What? Okay. I think he is sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they go by on a conveyor belt, right? And you lie underneath them and you just whip them what? off one by one. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, you come they... up like jaws? Like you I just get... <laughs> bite off their balls? Is your friend Australian? He lived in Australia for a year. Well, he was British. Yeah. Feels like they kind of saw him coming, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all do this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this guy looks like he'll bite the balls off anything. <laughs> I just don't get wrestling. What? It doesn't make any sense to me. We've covered it before on this podcast, and I find it impossible to research because everything you read about it, you're like, is this real? Did this really happen? Mm. The confusion of real sport and fake acting is bewildering. Like, there's this fight between him and Hulk Hogan, which was this really famous fight, and um, apparently it was super controversial. It was in 1988, and there was, this, there was a referee, a famous referee called Dave Hebner, who was, was refereed wrestling matches, and he happened to have an identical twin. Oh, yes. Who they tracked down for this match. The referee? And, yeah, yeah, the referee had an identical okay. twin. He didn't really, I think. No, I think he did. He them. did really. This, I've seen the actual pictures. Either he did or there's some amazing photoshopping going on. But he had this identical twin. And so, right, Andre the Giant's agent got Dave, who was supposed to referee the match, locked him in a cupboard and then bribed Earl, his identical twin, to referee the game instead. And he did. And then he made Andre the Giant one. And then Dave broke out of his closet. And then him and his identical twin brother had a big fight afterwards in front of the crowd. This is the weirdest conversation. I, I really want to hear Anna do the commentary of WWF. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand any of this. Is that real? Oh, my God. <laughs> but there's storylines. There's storylines. You go to the theatre all the time. Are you standing no. up going, what the fuck is going on here? No. <laughs> no, 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 because in the write-ups of the theatre, it doesn't say, and there was an incredibly controversial moment when Hamlet's mother remarried <laughs> Hamlet's <laughs> uncle and the audience can... You're like, oh, OK, this is a story. Whereas in the Wikipedia it's page, it's it's not like, clear. <laughs> was it controversial or was it all made up? It's all made was up. It, is it well, it's, not, it's all made up. It's all made up. Then why is it controversial? It's controversial <laughs> in the world of wrestling. Which is a fake world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is this it is, is weird amazing. how it's presented as true. You know, normally so with weird. plays there is a synopsis. Normally when you go out of the play, the thing doesn't keep happening out. Yes. No, but, no, but <laughs> I just think it's amazing that we found the edge of Anna's comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I and never you, thought we'd get there. Who would know it was pro wrestling <laughs> is fake? <laughs> Championships. I just think this is so amazing that these kind of things have the budget for this. I've been there once. What? Yeah. <laughs> Did not place. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you know where they were held, the last ones? Um, the one I went to was in either Lancashire or Yorkshire, I can't remember. Cool, the last one was in Bermuda, so I feel like... <laughs> Do you ever get the feeling you chose the wrong year? <laughs> I mean, who was paying for town crimes? Anyway, this year, it's the first time a Brit has won 
the town crier championship. It was very exciting. Mark Wiley uh, beat off 24 other contestants. <laughs> They were like, oh, yay! <laughs> it's one of the requirements these days. <laughs> he actually but, said... For legal reasons, we have to correct that. <laughs> Sorry. He, uh, so, this guy um, won... Over and above 24 other contestants. Um, what he won was an awful lot of rum, he said, <laughs> which I needed for medicinal purposes. He explained, which is understandable after the trauma he'd undergone. So. <laughs> Okay, it's time for fact number three, and that is my fact. My fact this week is that uh, we're sitting here in the Covent Garden office. This is an important room to us, and it's the last time the four of us are ever going to be in this room together doing the podcast, because Anna's going off and the offices are moving. Um, but it's also important for another reason, because in 2022, Anna and I set a Guinness World Record right here in this room. We became the world record holders of the longest anyone has ever played keep the balloon in the air tennis game between two people that was amazing <laughs> in that, history that, i remember that three weeks when you were doing that it was just because we would come in and we'd have to work around you <laughs> record the podcast each oh week. my god it was so hard it was tough wasn't it and yeah, not it sleeping was, for that long i mean really the amount of tough. red bull that we had to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 by the yeah. third week i just was really surprised <clears throat> you were still doing it yeah, yeah so that was that was the that was the rehearsal when we actually did it uh it was uh, 80 minutes we lost <laughs> 80 minutes for keeping a balloon in the and air. do you still have that record we've been beaten oh yeah. no yep we've been beaten someone beat us by eight seconds with i would argue an unfair advantage they had a giant balloon it was like the size of a beach ball oh, yeah. there should be a restriction on balloon size well you should have read the small print i should have read the small print yeah mm. but um but what one thing we did manage to do is make it into a physical guinness world record book uh okay. so there's a picture of me and anna in the guinness world records 2023 that's not us what what that's that's, that's oh us. there sorry i was looking at that bloke below <laughs> no, you, like, the, who was the, the chicken in your mind when I was <laughs> a man holding a chicken. What about, uh, is that Irving Finkel above you? That is Irving Finkel. And what does it say? Oldest depiction of a ghost. Oldest depiction wow. of a ghost. Uh, you're really on the best page here, right? <laughs> well, what you'll notice as well is I'm responsible for that ghost getting oh, the Guinness yeah. World Record. Yeah. Tell us how. I, I took uh, Craig Glende, who is the Guinness World mm. Records editor-in-chief, to the British Museum to meet the world's oldest ghost to give it a Guinness World Record. Oh. So. I wonder if you're the only person in that book, Dan, who's got two world records. Oh, that's possible. Mm. Is no, you Usain Bolton? Claim. Claim the same world record as Irving Finkel. You didn't find the oldest. No, ghost. no, I found the guy the with the oldest. Ghost. I just, I just, you know. I'm sorry, Dan. Can I just check this book? Can I just have a yeah. quick look at it? So yeah. this is this is um, Guinness World Records 2023. Yeah, and it's about an event that happened in 2022. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this is maybe the most successful book in history. Oh, okay. Maybe it's all right sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and so right. we did that. We did that here in this room. This uh, ghost was depicted two and a half thousand years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the, the world's oldest ghost is not going to have appeared in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. But yeah, it's we're, we're, I, and Anna, that's for you because I know you don't have a copy, so How I want you, you to that? have because obviously you don't have a copy. <laughs> no, you're not okay. interested in this kind of stuff, so yeah. So now we're forcing a copy onto you. I you mean, are. we did, we cheated, didn't we? Let's we didn't face cheat. It. We didn't cheat. Oh, what are hello. You about? We didn't cheat. Well, we're friends with Craig, who's, yeah. who's fantastic, who organises all the Guinness stuff, and he gave us a tip off that no one's tried to break this category, but it is a category. <clears> so as long as you get over an hour. So actually, we went for 20 minutes more than we needed to, which yeah. showed a lot of commitment because yeah. it was pub time by then. It's right, yeah. And Anna <laughs> drank the whole way through. This big glass of wine in her hand. I think I had a beer, but it was... Um, I can't quite remember now. It was it was daunting. It was very scary. It's very scary <laughs> keeping a balloon in the air, wasn't it? Do you remember the... like the well, it terrifying. I mean, it's, what is riding on it, really? I mean, if you... There was just... a bomb inside. <laughs> it touches the ground. You literally could have just tried again the next day or the yeah. next hour. <laughs> Do you know how tedious... 
is it a sign that we're just Dan Schreiber for almost two hours? <laughs> the record should have been the person who spent the most time with Dan Schreiber. <laughs> Even the ghost pissed off after 20 minutes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of adventures where Anna has been the kind of um, the the butt of the story, I would say, to an extent. Mm. Um, like little the anus, adventures. The Garfield's anus of the story. Ass, yeah. the ass. <laughs> and we will be missing the ass what soon. What are you talking about? I just, I, I, get, I get a bit upset because I wasn't there for some of my favourite ones and James was. James, you two oh. have had a, quite a few adventures. Well, there was the time that Anna flipped over her bike by a canal, knocked her teeth out mm-hmm. and you had to rescue her outside a pub because... I, I wouldn't say was... I rescued her. <laughs> <laughs> I took her to the hospital. Yeah, that, was, that was very nice of you because I didn't oh. have a phone on me or anything and so I had to wait for a passerby to come. <laughs> Who do you think knocked you off the bike? <laughs> <laughs> But then, but then also, hey, well, well, can I just say on that because yeah. it was quite funny because we're in A and E, uh, and we were just sat there waiting for you to be seen, mm-hmm. and you just come back from Ireland. You've been on holiday oh, well in Ireland, remembered, yeah. And you were telling me a story about what had happened, and for some reason, you'd upset someone who ran a shop. Oh my and god! And you upset this woman <laughs> so much that she started shouting at you, saying, "Who the hell do you think you are?" Yeah. Right. And when you told me the story, you said it in a really thick Irish accent. I could do it. I could do it now. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> but you said it just as the doctor was coming from behind you to say, "Anna Tashinsky, where are you?" And so all he saw was me and you, you with your face covered in blood, and you yelling at me, "Who the hell do you think you are?" <laughs> and we just looked like wow. some kind of domestic abuse couple. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, we're working on our issues. <laughs> just fix my jaw. <laughs> get out of here oh he would have heard then you go to an english accent and think okay she's seriously wobbly something's happening <laughs> we need to keep she's her got in a foreign accent yeah, syndrome exactly yeah who's the president or the tea sock you know <laughs> <laughs> but the best story and i don't know if you're gonna say it i just want to tear it up and say <laughs> i hope you'll say it and it was the it's the regret of my yeah. life i wasn't there for it is when james and anna went to a university in order to tell uh, uh, canterbury. the students canterbury and you stayed the night in a hotel and Anna got a bit drunk <laughs> I don't think I should tell the story I, or should I I don't know no, I re- look, I'll tell you what I remember of it which is that um James and I went and um yeah Alan Davies was doing a show at Canterbury we went I to think he some... just got like an honorary degree or something yes right? he had and so he was being interviewed and it was great and so we went for some moral support uh, me, James, Alan, and John Lloyd. Did, well, John Al- Lloyd. Alan went for, to support himself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to come along to, for moral support. Moral support. Yeah. <laughs> um, afterwards, we had quite a lot to drink in some hotel bar, and we were staying in this place that was actually next to the cathedral, which was awesome. It was almost like part of the cathedral, wasn't it? It was kind of appended it's to it. Certainly a place where I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> God might judge <laughs> adversely. Um, so great night. I guess it's about three o'clock. Yeah. We sort of went to retired to bed, and I have this thing in often. the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, Andy. I didn't know that. I thought this all happened around 11pm, 11.30, 3. Woo. That's, Andy's always stopped at that bit of the story, just jaw on the floor. <laughs> Can't hear anything else. Okay, go on, go on. Um, so I really love looking round places and sneaking into places that maybe I'm not supposed to be in yeah. and um, like yeah, disuse rooms and buildings and sometimes used buildings, whatever. <laughs> and so um, I wasn't really tired and I thought I'd go for a wander. So I remember first of all, pushing op- open a lot of doors in my hotel corridor to see what opened. <laughs> <laughs> Managing to get into a sort of weird garden out of a fire escape and then climbing over a fence into the cathedral um, kind of air where the, the cathedral right. uh, then wandering around there and then what happens often with me is you're drunk and you're in this place you're not allowed to be in and you're like well I guess I'll go back now so climb back over the fence went back upstairs and I pushed another door in the hotel and ended up in this lecture theatre where I sort of fannied around for a bit, looked in all the cupboards, <laughs> trying to see uh, see what I could see. You really. found a lot of candy, didn't you? I found a lot of sweets. I found a massive bag of different coloured sweets. <laughs> and I thought what would be so amusing would be if I took these all back to my room and I just took all the green ones out. <laughs> And then I just put it back in the room and that's going to freak the shit out of whoever comes <laughs> to get the sweets next time. And also green's my favourite colour of sweet. So I spent about half an hour in my room with a huge bag taking out all the green sweets. 
And then I went to put the bag of sweets back because I don't want to just steal people's sweets. Of all course people's not. Sweets. No. Yeah. And then as I was leaving the room, having replaced the bag of sweets, I just saw this massive whiteboard at the front of the room. And so I thought, okay, I'll just grab a marker pen. <laughs> I grabbed a marker pen and I wrote in big letters, yippee Kaye, motherfuckers. <laughs> in capitals on this whiteboard and then um that was actually ideal timing because i heard someone coming down the corridor and do a bit of a oi and what are you doing and so then i legged it and it was a member of staff so i legged it back to my room as he sort of chased me yeah. so then you went to bed right Job i've done. been asleep this whole time <laughs> Job done. Yeah. i woke up the next morning to check out and you were like a naughty schoolgirl sat in the corner of the reception being bollocked by someone <laughs> Yeah, um, it transpired. It was actually very unlucky because it hadn't been a whiteboard. It had been a built-in white screen that was part of the wall. And I'd written on it in indelible, unremovable ink <laughs> in large letters, yippee ki motherfuckers. A diehard quote. That, oh, I do remember that from the night before when I was chased by the security guard. I was going, it's a quote from Die Hard. <laughs> to excuse it like i'm not saying you became motherfuckers it's a quote it's a quote <laughs> anyway. So, anyway the push comes to shove the next morning at 9 a.m there was a church group who had booked that room <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that did seem to be the truth of the matter <laughs> and they walked in <laughs> someone desperately scrubbing off <laughs> The they couldn't scrub it off. They had to cover it up. They had to cover it up with a curtain. Oh my goodness. And um, I was charged a small amount of money for the repairs to the room. Le less, in fact, probably than your one small bag of laundry in New York. Was. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good going. It was the funniest thing that I've ever experienced. Being on the train coming back and you having to ring up our boss oh to gosh. tell them because I think it had come off the company credit cards or something. Yeah. So you knew that they were gonna find out. No, they'd they told our accountant at work. So actually the first thing I knew was, just empathize for a minute with me, please. <laughs> I'd gone to bed incredibly drunk about four in the morning. My phone rang at 8 a.m. and I saw it was Liz, our lovely accountant. And imagine the heart sinking when I saw Liz's name come up. I thought, I know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I've been rumbled. And yeah, uh, I uh, picked up and the hotel had indeed called her. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. I thought it was going to be fired, actually. We laugh yeah, now, guys, but no. this could have been the end of the podcast. Because I remember mm. pretty much all the way from like, let's say, well, for about half an hour on the train back, you were like, I'm going to get fired. What are we going to do? Yeah. There'll be no more podcast because I won't be able to do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to prison yeah. and to hell. <laughs> um, let's not forget the cathedral's right next door. Yeah, it's so, a great yeah. story. Yeah. Never told. Anyway, <laughs> good luck getting those stories out of these so-called guests you're having on. <laughs> <laughs> Is Sarah Pascoe going to do that? Yeah, she, she probably would. She would have been up for it. Oh, well, let's, let's have... Why don't we do one more batch of Best of Anna and just hear a bit more from the greatest hits from the last nine years. Anna Tushinsky. Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to let you know we are sponsored this week by Babbel. Yes, that's right. Babbel is the incredible in-your-pocket app that allows you to learn dozens of languages curated by over 150 language experts and making sure that you have the best pronunciation. It is the ultimate guide to learning a new language. And it's so much fun. I have been genuinely using Babbel in the last six months to brush up on my French. You can join in conversations that have been carefully written and put together to allow you to take part in chats, but also then to build your vocabulary as you go. It, it's quick, it's easy, it's fun. The lessons are about 15 minutes. You can do them on the go. It's just great. And you can also tailor it to what suits your learning best. So, for example, if you feel you learn best through podcasts or maybe it's through gaming or just watching videos or you want to do live classes, they have all of these options so that you can find the best method to take the language into that old brain of yours. So if you want to give it a go, all you need to do is head to babble.com slash podcast 23. And if you do that and you get a three month subscription, if you use the offer code NOFISH, they're going to give you three extra months all for free. That's right. It's babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash podcast 23. Stick in the offer code NOFISH and you will get an extra three months free with the purchase of a three month subscription. Amazing. Okay. On with the show. On with the show. I was 
I was having a look at the Reverend Richard Coles' autobiography, or biography, oh, yeah. and um, he's got, he was saying, it was just a throwaway line that I then looked into. He was saying that a lot of vicars have funny names, and he was saying he knew someone who insisted on everyone, even bishops, calling them the Reverend Gaz. And so then I thought, I wonder what funny names there have been in the church over the years. Mm. There's this blog, the blog of St. Chrysostom's Church in Manchester. And it's, it's really good. You know when people put proper effort into like quite an obscure thing? And there's a piece on funny names of church leaders throughout history. And there are some such good ones. So I like this anecdote, which is Henry Joy Fines Clinton, who was a rector in the early 20th century, who went to see the Bishop of London, and the bishop said, take a chair, Clinton, to which he replied, it's Fines Clinton. And, and the bishop said, in that case, take two. And so it's just, I thought that was funny from a bishop. Yeah. It's bishop humour. It's bishop humour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we won't get him on the podcast. I was just this was his audition <laughs> tape, and I thought, oh, um, no, come on, give us more zingers. Right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What about this? The very Reverend Gonville Ob French Baytag, but French is spelt with a small f and two of them. <laughs> is, that in, is that important for the anecdote? Oh. There's no anecdote. That's it. There's that's no anecdote. It. That's it. <laughs> it's just, just the word Fred spelled <laughs> slightly differently. <laughs> no, Anna, oh we God. want you to tell us every single one you found. <laughs> yeah. This is all, this is literally all I've got now. It's just lists of, uh, <laughs> lists of not very amusing names. Okay, Father John Brabazon Brabazon Louther. Come on. It's two Brabazons. Brabazon Brabazon. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm just picturing Jimmy Carr at the Hammersmith <laughs> Apollo. <laughs> Your next act is a fucking killer act. She's got some amazing anecdotes. Anna Tashinsky, everybody. We've got Father Page Turner. We've got Father Pickles. We've Page, got Fa Page Turner. Open with Page Turner. <laughs> That's great. Father Pickles <laughs> is funny as well. I'll reorder the set. Father Careful. Uh, Father Christmas. Um, okay. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> so that's the one I should stick with, Father Christmas. Yeah. I don't think stick with any of it. <laughs> but, okay. You know. <laughs> Have you, have you guys heard of St. Andrew Undershaft? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe... You just right. said a name way funnier than Anna's just, 20 names. <laughs> just upstage the full day of work I'm so I went sorry. Into delving into church archives. I'm so sorry. This is right under your nose the whole time. Uh, on the subject of people being allergic to things, I went on to... Uh, I continued my search. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I went to Yahoo Answers um, because people often ask questions. The best site on the internet. <laughs> uh, this was the, um, the question. Uh, so my girlfriend is allergic to almost every animal you'd find in a petting zoo. If she inhales air that is around a horse, she can be hospitalized. Now, she loves giraffes. Does anyone think she'd be allergic to them too? I was thinking of surprising her on her birthday with a trip to the local zoo to pet a giraffe. And the reply, the top rated reply, because that's how it works on Yahoo Answers, the most votes for reply, if she's allergic to almost every animal, I guarantee you the zoo will contain more than just giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do something less stupid? <laughs> So where did you take her in the end, Dan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Britain's leading female table tennis player is this woman, this girl called Tin Tin Ho. And do you guys, can you guess why she's called that? She's got a quiff, Tin Tin. Uh, um, that's why no. I was, I was thinking Got a small Tintin. dog called Snowy. Confusingly, it's not related to the character of Tintin. Wait, she hangs out with an old fisherman called kidding. Captain Haddock. Uh, again, it's not like a <laughs> she thing. Has, um, she has a pair of twins that she hangs out with called the Thompson Twins. <laughs> you can't just stop us making Tintin jokes, Anna, immediately. You've got to live she, with her, her father is called Hergé. <laughs> right. As I have made quite clear, it's not related to Tintin. And there must be other avenues you can pursue. She's Belgian, you know? Tin. She, right. Belgian? I'm yeah. just going to tell you, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. I feel like we're close. She's made of tin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. he's found something different. But okay. incorrect. No, it's because her dad is obsessed with table tennis. And it actually sounds kind of weird. <laughs> no, like, sorry, yeah, hang it's on. Com it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> I, I, was, I was so sure you were going to say her dad is obsessed with tin. tin. <laughs> yeah. I wish I hadn't brought this up. <laughs> He's obsessed with table tennis 
Yeah. And the initials of table tennis are TT. So we called her Tintin. And in fact, her brother is called Ping. And she said there was, it was between her being called Tintin and her being called Pong when she was born. Wow. And so she says that she is delighted that she didn't That's get cool. ponged. You can't have two That's kids cool. call them Ping and Pong. So the social well, no, services no. will get involved. <laughs> you would think. Um, ABBA? Oh, yeah. In 1976, they had the number one spot for 39 weeks. And after oh. 12 weeks of it, their version of Top of the Pops just stopped showing the music video because like, you've seen it for 12 weeks, guys. And the, In the fan, Australia, that was. Yeah, fans absolutely rioted. And that was on the Australian version of Top of the Pops, which was called Countdown. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, when you say fans rioted... Did I say rioted? Yeah. I meant were furious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one complaint so. was registered with the ABC. No, but genuinely, look, when they toured, one mother ran and she put her baby down on the road so that their tour caravan would stop and she could get an autograph. Whoa. There, was a, there was a hotel which cut up their bed sheets after they'd left and they sold it via newspaper Oh, adverts. they do that all the time. Yeah, they did that with the Beatles as well. Did and they? I've got about Not the baby them. thing, though. <laughs> I just want you to know we will not succumb to that kind of blackmail. If there's a baby in front of our tour bus, we're going straight over it. <laughs> 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 That's fish policy, right? Uh, yeah. It's very important to get that clear from the outset. That's good. Uh, it's very controversial the way they vote in the Grammys. Oh, yeah. Because it's, well, until this year, it was super secret. Mm. Uh, it sounds quite exciting. And I think the, what, what used to happen was winners were decided by this, like, 12,000-strong Recording Academy <laughs> bunch of voters. <laughs> Uh, but then I think partly because the awards just kept going so wrong um, and they just kept giving it to weird people, they had to change the rules. And I think the straw that broke the camel's back came in the early 90s when over at Album of the Year was up and Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA was released and Prince's Purple Rain was released and Lionel Richie's Can't Slow Down won. And everyone said, we don't like that that's not as good as the other two and so um, they formed a secret committee which basically goes through all the 12,000 votes and takes out the duds because actually you would think that having a larger group 12,000 would be more likely to give you a democratic answer right yeah Yeah. 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 but a democratic answer isn't necessarily the best answer James is that not right okay that's um, (laughs) my view (laughs) I have my one way ticket to Russia (laughs) it's just come through (laughs) And anyway, people got quite pissed off by the secret committee because no one knew how they voted or why they voted. And there's someone called The Weekend, I think. Oh, The Weekend. The yeah. Weekend. Oh, right. Well, it's, not, well, it's spelled The Weekend. weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, this I, show has certainly weakened over the years, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so it's felt like Weekend. Anyway, but without any. So um, he. Well, with two E's. <laughs> <laughs> but not three. Anyway, the weekend got annoyed that he hadn't got nominated. I think it's pronounced the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. I just, I want a new podcast where we give Anna the name of all the bands that are in the charts and see if she can pronounce them. Oh. They've asked me to read out the nominations next year. I'm quite nervous now. Lil Nas the Tenth. <laughs> I did another one, nine other little nuzzes. I know how to artificially inseminate a cow based on researching for this podcast. Cool. So I think 75% of dairy cows in this country, uh, when they have to be inseminated, they get inseminated but just by semen rather than the actual bull. And for some reason, I found myself reading this really in-depth farmer's guide to how to do it. And what I didn't realise was, you, so you get a semen gun, uh, which you put the, the semen in. <laughs> and you Imagine you bring your semen gun to a gunfight. <laughs> oh. Damn it. <laughs> you bring your semen gun to the insemination fight, and but what you do is you have to... Uh, so there are two entries into a cow. Uh, so it's much like the humans. For, yeah. You've got the... Front. Oh, sorry. Uh, there are three There's now? Oh, sorry, there are three. Anna, we're in Devon. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me you're not the biggest expert in this room <laughs> on the number of ways into a cow. <laughs> what? All right, I know the people in Devon know all these secret ways, but there are two entries... <laughs> There were two entries into the back of a cow, officially. Um, and so, you know, one is the rectum, uh, as, as we all have. And Stop, then... Professor, let me write this down. <laughs> Children! 
children. <laughs> Will you be quiet? You've got the rectum, and then you've got the sex tubes, and they're different. <laughs> the cervix. Um, and, but what you do is, amazingly, when you're inseminating a cow, you obviously have to stick the gun in the cervix. But the way you navigate the gun into, into the uterine horns, as they're called, um, is you have to put your other arm that's not holding the gun into the rectum. <laughs> <laughs> So you, it's so amazing. And they say you shove your arm into the, insert your arm into the rectum, get someone else to hold the cow's tail aside while you do this. That would be a bald farmer who tried using one foot (laughs) to to pin the cow's tail. (laughs) This is the worst game of Twister I've ever played. (laughs) It says left hand sex tubes. (laughs) Anyway, look. It just feels like this lesson isn't going to end. So you, you essentially use your rectum arm to navigate your semen gun, which is in the vaginal canal, uh, and you push it through. So you, you you got your arm in the rectum, and it's pushing against the other canal so that it gets into the uterus, and it's called recto-vaginal insemination. And that's a lesson over. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, there we go. There it is. Some of the best of Anna Tashinsky's best bits. Um, I was trying to think, you know, is there some way that we could keep a bit of you here, you know? Oh, God. Oh my keep, God. Is there some way... Creepy. That's we disgusting. Want, give us the finger. Just, give us the finger. Just in spirit, <laughs> you know? Just in spirit. She's been metaphorically giving everyone the finger for the last <laughs> nine years. I'll tell you what, though. Okay. I, I thought hard about it. I thought, how do we keep a bit of Anna here? And I worked it out. I suddenly remembered the weirdest story I have ever heard involving Anna Tashinsky, and it is this. There was a Christmas party that Anna once went to, and part of the party, they said, we're going to do a really fun thing. We're going to do a raffle. You're just going to take a ticket, and you're going to get a present. So everyone bring a present so you can give it to someone. So I was talking to the friend today who I bumped into. She gave a scarf, for example. Right. Yeah, normal things. Normal things were handed around. This person, whose name is Lenny, received her number and received her prize in the raffle. I'd never met Lenny. And this is the prize that Anna had donated. (gasps) It is her teeth. (laughs) Oh my God. That fell out of her mouth. Presu- Lenny, Lenny hasn't treasured and kept the teeth. WTF. <laughs> she has. They're, they're in her home. I went to her home today to pick it up. This is, Lenny didn't know who Anna was. She opens up her present <laughs> and there are teeth from one of the other party members there. Were these the teeth that got knocked out when James went to get you from? Yeah. Yeah, so these um, are the teeth. They, they got Did removed. They? So the ones oh, that got fully they were, knocked out. I thought they were in the canal. They're in the canal. We went looking for them. We did. <laughs> the fully knocked out ones were in the canal, and they were the ones that had to get taken out later. Bloody hell. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Anna thought mm. it'd be normal to give, in a raffle prize, her teeth away. Now, Polly, who is the partner of Lenny, tried to get rid of Anna's teeth to begin with because she has a fear of teeth. <laughs> She literally hates the tapping of tea. It was the worst present that could have arrived Sorry, into the house. But as a result, for the last couple of years since they've had these teeth, Lenny hides your teeth all over the house to surprise Polly. If she goes to sleep, she'll put it under her pillow. If she's p- opening oh, a pencil case, wow. the teeth will be inside the pencil case. Reverse tooth fairy, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they, they almost got given away in another raffle very recently, uh, but Lenny decided to keep them because she was wow. having too much time. How much did you pay for those? And have you told your wife? <laughs> But so now, while you're gone, you are here. There'll be a bit of Anna. What we're going to do us. is we're going to make Sarah Pascoe put some of those. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Every time there's a guest, we're going to make them shove them into their face. It's going to make the podcast sound very weird, isn't it? But it's <laughs> worth it to get a bit of me. Oh, well, I'm so honoured uh, that my teeth have had such a life beyond me, actually. I know. It's really exciting. Who would have thought? That's a weird yeah. story, Dan. Well, That's I, a weird story. Yeah. And you're responsible too, Anna. James is the only one who gets off scot for it. No, actually, you were involved in the losing of the teeth. Yeah. What? Well, I was not. <laughs> I'm the only one here who doesn't have any involvement with this mad, batshit, teeth raffle story. You will. I won't. <laughs> you the it. next chapter. <laughs> <laughs> (laughs) 
Anyway, let's wrap up. That is it. That is all of our facts. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to get in contact with any of us about the weird ass stories that we've said over the course of this podcast, we can all be found on our Twitter accounts. I'm on at Schreiberland. Andy. At Andrew Hunter M. James. At James Harkin. And Anna. No, you don't say anything. You're gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can, can email podcast.qi.com, but good luck me ever seeing it. Yeah. And Andy will see it and do a good impersonation of you. Right. Yeah, that's right. You'll be wearing the teeth every time you <laughs> reply to an email. I'll time the emails all to go out between 3 and 5 a.m. and then everyone will end yippee ki motherfucker. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go to our group account at No Such Thing. And we'll be back again next week with a really exciting guest as part of our big rotation of awesome guests, starting with Sarah Pascoe. And uh, we'll be back with that episode next week. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye.